If we go to the museum at 18th and Vine, she's combined the American Black Museum. the Negro League Baseball Museum. Jazz and baseball together at one place, one time. Amy's thesis. Here we go. Herman, uh, Glenn Miller, Tommy Darcy. Uh, yeah, it's actually it's getting to the top, I think. Did you have much interaction with the, yeah. the musicians? Sure, I was a musician myself. Oh, really? Yeah, I played out to six. I used to run with that union around the corner, six, uh, six forty-seven. I wasn't what you call a professional musician. I just played it in high school and college. Yeah. Did you? But did you like hang out with the musicians? Yeah, did they come sure. to your games yeah, and vice versa? I'm a little bunch of. As a matter of fact, I had a chance to go with two or three of them, but I was young and I. I didn't really want to go on highway at that time. This was back about 1943. Uh, Brown played uh, locally. See, I'm originally from Springfield, Missouri. And I played in the band, you know, the uh, uh, night concerts. Uh, never mind. From 43 up to, uh, what? I got quit. And uh, he was what you call a, uh, Singles and doubles hit hit her. I, I hit from more power than he did, and he hit from the right side, and I hit from the left side. As a set, as a matter of fact, I was originally a right-handed hitter, and I started training myself after a guy uh, 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 played in the Cardinal organization back then. His name was Don Silsley, uh, and he took two steps. He was also the manager there. This was back in 1940. Now, your dad started to play in the uh, major in the Negro no. League? No, no. No, see, he, was, uh, he just played locally there in Springfield. <coughs> uh, see, and then uh, my sister and my brother come along, so he didn't have, he didn't have a Chinese chance. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you got your interest in baseball? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, like I said, I started playing baseball because I didn't. I lived uh, pretty close to the park there and uh, played football. All of it. I played all sports. It's just the idea. I like baseball better because uh, back in them days, uh, uh, I wasn't as heavy as uh, I thought I should have been to be been what you call a wide receiver. And the guys were hit pretty hard then. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, when I got hit two or three times, I'd throw a little dirt in them guys' eyes. Because <laughs> they were hitting two holes. But what position did you play, Doc? What? For big football? Uh, big baseball. I was center fielder. Center fielder? Yeah. How did, how did the... Uh, Monarchs got me? Yeah. Well, it was a guy... The owner, he had a friend who lived in my hometown. He'd been seeing me play for years. And uh, one time uh, he spoke to me and asked me uh, how would I like to play with the uh, team in Kansas City. I said, I said oh, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it. So he, uh, he called Tom and Nick within, I'd say, two hours. He called me and told me to come up here. Well, that was on a Thursday. And he told me to meet him down here at the Streets Hotel. And I met him down there and signed me up immediately. Because uh, uh, this guy told him I was a pretty good ball player. Uh, was Buck your manager? Yeah, Buck one was my manager. So I came up and uh, Mickey Man down there. Now, did you play against or did you have a chance to bat against Satchel at all? Oh yeah, yeah. Tell us about that was him. My, that was my first experience when I came here uh, uh, later on in the year after they signed me. He was playing with the uh, All-American Giants and uh, the word got around that they'd had a country boy that hit the ball pretty good and uh, I was taking batting practices and uh, skipped on and said there he stands up there right now. 
So he come over to me and told me, he said, well, you're not, you're not, you hit the ball pretty good, but you're not going to hit me. Not today. And I told him, if you pitch the ball right and uh, don't use that hesitation pitch, I said, I'm going to pick you out of Irwin Brooklyn. He said, I don't know. So uh, he thought, I guess, I was, I was playing or something. He threw me a knee-high fastball, and that was inside knee-high fastball. Mm -hmm. Only thing I got around on it too uh, too quick, and I did pull it over the fence mm -hmm. in the right field line. So he looked at me right quick and said, "You won't get that one," because he was right in my power. See, I was anything from the belt to the knees, right. in or out. Right. And uh, see, he didn't know I'd been hitting against some of the greatest pitchers that uh, that already been to the majors. Sure. And as I said, he was a great pitcher. Is he the best you placed? Yeah, in my opinion, yeah. the best pitcher I had. Because he had great control. That was the, uh, the most you know, significant thing that I thought about. He had pinpoint control. He could throw the ball anywhere he wanted to at any given time. Right. How he could do it. And he wasn't that big. He was just tall and what I call angular. And uh, had the big teeth and long arms. But from the belt to the knees, he was very small. Mm -hmm. Now, you played 1947? No, 49. 49 yeah. to 54. Yeah. So that was toward the end of the... You know, yeah. It didn't, see, uh, uh, see, Jackie come, uh, played, uh, I'd say, around 45 and 46. Right. And I remember Jackie. Because... Uh, that's when I see my dad wanted me to be a lawyer, but I didn't want to be. No mm -hmm. But see, back in them day, excuse me, saying that he know you done what your parents asked you to do, <laughs> regardless whether you want to do it or not. Now I done the same thing, like I tell the kids today, hey, same thing you doing now. I tried back 50 years ago. It didn't work then, and it shouldn't work now. I said. Uh, I, I've also, the only thing I didn't do was talk back. I said, because I would got knocked down. I knew that. But roll your eyes behind their back and all that. I said, I've done the same thing. So it didn't work. Then it's not going to work. No. You think it's new. It's not new. <laughs> what you need to do is go get you an education. And I preach that. I preach that to all of them that I, uh, you know, that I can talk to. So with this high tech, you got to have it. They told me when I was going back in high school to be prepared because things are going to change and you're going to have to do I didn't know it, you know, be as high tech as it is now. Had I done, uh, you know, uh, realized that, I probably could have a better, better effort. What was your highlight? What, in, in high school? No, in baseball. If you look back and you say, boy, that day was the day I really remember. Oh, man, yeah, that's a hard question. I had two or three. What's your ball? All of them. <laughs> well, the first one was against Satchel, and my next one, uh, I, I, I hit against a pitcher that went on uh, to play with the uh, old Washington uh, Senators. Mm -hmm. He was a left-hander, and I hit left-handed, and couldn't nobody hit him, but he hung a, a curveball, and I took him out of down there in <laughs> Memphis. Can't think of his name, but I should remember his name just like I was sitting here talking to him. But he went on to uh, star with the Memphis Red. I mean, with the old uh, Washington Senators for sure. years. Yeah, he was a left-handed pitcher. And several other incidents. I remember, uh, just like I was telling her, uh, uh, the bus caught on fire in 1954 in Florida, and I woke up. I smell something funny because we had we had to take on 14 other ball players, three umpires, and well, we had more than we put to have them. And uh, we left Atlanta, and we was wasn't supposed to be going through uh, Jacksonville until seven that morning. We were going through at 6:30, and with all the extra uh, luggage we had on that bus, called the fire. Yeah, and I, I smelled something that didn't smell right. And I woke O'Neill and uh, William Disney up and told him what I'd done. And uh, I told him I think we need to stop this bus because I'd been trying to stop the bus driver for about uh, about an hour. Mm -hmm. And 
and he told me to go on back and sit down. I didn't know what I was talking about. But uh, I was real persistent. I just went home. Finally, uh, uh, O'Neill and them stopped the bus. Caught on fire within. They could just, just soon as it stopped, you know, hit that uh, air, air. Right. She just took out and burned up everything. Right. Uh -huh. That's true. So, uh, what was the funniest thing that happened to you? I mean, you, you. Funniest thing? Yeah. Oh. Uh, they used to have what they call a, a thing that they uh, uh, put soaps in your eyes. They'd have, uh, you know, you know, your roommate would tally with these other guys. This is when you were young, and I, I was always, uh, I'd get up and one night, I, I just got so tired I couldn't you know, sleep. Okay. And my roommate let them in, and, and, and when they, they touch you, and you wake up and open your eyes, they put all that soap in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the funniest thing. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. But other than that, everything was great. Oh, great. I enjoyed myself very well. <laughs> very good. Do you have any idea what the, the name of Monarch where it came from? No. I don't. I really don't. You'd have to ask for the meal there. Because he's an older guy and he's been around. Yeah. Some of the old timers that uh, uh, that I can recall that used to be here are deceased now. Yeah. And they would know, and I, I don't know. I, it was just uh, the guy that started it. He's, he's dead now. It's Bud Wilkerson. Right. Okay. He was the okay. first owner. Was he around when you were around? Wilkerson? Yeah. He was still, he was still around. He just wasn't uh, as active as he was because he then got old. And he retired. He sold it to Tom Bear. Right. Uh, now that's the guy that uh, that I remember. Right. He had a, a pool hall and something, and something else around in Minnesota Avenue. I can't recall exactly where it was. It's been so long ago. Uh, but he's deceased now too. Big part was a big part of your life. Did you play ball the jazz part in Kansas City? Well, I was just uh, yeah, I'd say. It's, big part of it was mm -hmm. because that was the entertainment industry and uh, I used to see all the big timers just roll up down here because uh, see Duke Elgin, Count Basie, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, you name it, all of them just walk right up and down the street. Uh, Dinah Washington. I've seen them all. Was there a lot of gambling going on? No, not to my knowledge. I've heard about it from other guys. I didn't associate with the gambling spirits. It's just like any other thing. Uh, uh, I assume that there were certain years, certain people done certain things. Well, see, uh, growing up in a small town, like I did, they didn't do that. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody knew what everybody was doing. Uh, I can recall my first date. It was a lady, she told me what time I came in. And uh, uh, she thought I was too young. <laughs> I was a junior in high school. I, what else was I supposed to do? And, uh, it just went out there. But other than that, uh, I don't know. I, I've had a really nice life. I can't complain to that. The only thing that uh, disappointed me more than anything, I happened to be in the, uh, in the reserve after World War II. And the Korean thing come up, that's exactly when I thought I could have made the major right. in 1951. Because they'd already had people looking at it. And when that thing come up, it's just like this crap that's going on now. They reached and got me. I couldn't get out, so I ended up over in Korea.